It was 2016, and I had just started a new job at a motel. It paid low wages, but I needed an office job. One of my friends, Michael, got me this job. For a few days, I underwent training with the owner in the mornings. For two nights, Michael trained me for the 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift. It was nothing exciting, checking guests in and doing paperwork. My boss, the owner, went away with his wife on vacation for a week, which explained the swift training I had to endure. So it was my first night alone on the night shift. There was a monitor with security cameras around the motel's property and large glass windows all around the office building, but there was no night window like most motels have. It was fairly early in the night, around 1 a.m., when a man walked in and asked if we had any rooms available. Usually, if someone seemed sketchy, my boss had me lie and say no, but he appeared normal at the moment. Without hesitation, I said, Yes, of course. Just for one? He replied affirmatively. So I began creating the reservation on the computer, when I noticed he started swatting the air and making spitting noises, as if he was being surrounded by flies. I tried to ignore it. As far as I was concerned, it wasn't my business. So I tried to check him into the room as quickly as possible, gave him his key, and sent him on his way. At this point, I could be described as very timid. I had a lot going on in my personal life, so I hope you can all understand my reaction to what happened next. The man returned from his room and slammed his hand on the glass door, causing me to jump. Absolutely frightened, I looked up to see him just staring at me. He cracked the door and put his head through, saying, I can't get into my room, why won't you let me into my room? My only defense was trying to be helpful, so I replied, Maybe there's something wrong with your key. Let me give you another one. The look he had in his eyes was inexplicable, and I felt like I was in absolute danger. I handed him his new key, and he went back to his room. I tried texting Michael for help, but there was no reply. It was the middle of the night, and he was asleep. With no reply from Michael, I noticed the man trudging down the stairs to come back. I went into absolute panic mode, ran into the back office, locked the door, and pulled out my pocket knife. It's important to have protection when working at night. I heard the man in the office yelling, Hello? Hello? Why won't you let me into my room? Do you not like me? Being an absolute idiot and not standing my ground or calling the police when I was scared, I decided to take this situation on alone. I replied, I'm just on the phone. I'll be right out. Then, I started calling Michael repeatedly for help, but there was no answer. I took a few deep breaths and then stepped out of the office. The man wasn't there. He was in the bathroom. I started hearing him talking to himself, angrily saying, Kill her! Kill her! My heart sank. Still being an idiot and not calling the police, he came out and I said, Your key was broken, I'm sorry. Let me escort you to your room. Thankfully, he agreed. I was wearing a long-sleeved sweater, so with my arms down, I was able to hide my knife in my hand while holding it. I began to walk outside, and he seemed insistent on walking behind me. We started making our way to the staircase and up towards his room. I was sweating from how nervous I was, continuously looking behind me to ensure he wasn't going to make a move. He stopped at a room, and I stopped at his room a few doors down. I smiled and said, Oh, that's the wrong room. This is your room, as it clearly said on the door. The whole time he was going to someone else's room and trying to open the door. I felt bad for them. I quickly ran back to the office, locked the door, and the next guest I checked in was a police officer from a few towns away. I felt bad for confiding in them about the guy, but they seemed willing to keep an eye and ear out. The next night, the man came back, but I had the doors locked and told him we were all booked up. I explained to my boss what happened when he got back from vacation. However, he didn't take me seriously. I continued to work there on the night shift for the next year, where many other strange encounters happened. I work in a fairly busy hospital downtown, in the NICU. I usually work at night, and I kid you not, this happened to me less than five minutes ago. I figured it would be a good idea to document this before I forget. It's also a way for me to have some sort of proof in case something comes of it. During orientation, we are taught to be observant for signs of a possible abductor. We were taught to look for oversized clothing, bags, and shifty behavior. Fortunately, I've never encountered a strange individual until just now. It's currently 2.59 a.m., and I've been sitting at the front desk since 11 p.m. I'm a nursing student, so I usually handle clerical work around the unit. 
I also monitor the cameras to ensure no one unauthorized is present. It's usually pretty quiet at night. However, I've already had a somewhat weird night, so this just adds a cherry on top of it. The NICU and most of the second floor is a secured unit. This means that in order to gain entrance, you have to pick up a phone that then rings at the desk. Usually it's parents wanting to see their babies or family members who are lost. It typically quiets down around 11 p.m., so no one usually comes in or out during my shift except for housekeeping. One of the security cameras is positioned so I can see who is picking up the first phone. I had been sitting here browsing Instagram when the phone rang. I glanced over at the phone, thinking it was a parent wanting an update or something of that sort. It took me a second to realize that it was the number for the first set of doors. I picked it up and looked over at the screen. There was a lady in baggy clothing with a sling on her arm. I answered the door, and she said she wanted to find her cousin, who had apparently been brought up from the emergency department. I asked for the last name, and she unintelligibly rambled off a Latino name that I only caught the first part of. Knowing that we did not have any new admissions, I told her we didn't have anyone by that name. I tried to get more information from her, and she again mentioned that her cousin had been brought up from the ED. In that case, I informed her that she should go to labor and delivery and speak to them. She hesitated, and then said okay, and walked away. I got a really weird feeling from her, so I checked the census to see if anyone was being assessed in L and D, and there wasn't. So either she was at the wrong hospital, or she wanted access to the unit for something more sinister than just seeing her cousin. I shrugged it off, thinking that if her cousin was in L and D, she would find her, and all would be well. About five minutes later, the same lady appeared in her extremely baggy clothing and her sling. The only difference was that this time, she was putting the sling on and using her injured hand to fumble with something in her oversized sweatshirt. She picked up the phone and once again requested entry to find her cousin, mentioning that L and D said they had no one by that name. I told her the exact same thing, insisting that she needed to contact her cousin and return to L and D. She became hostile for a moment, then hung up the phone. Whether or not she was trying to gain access to the unit for things that she shouldn't be doing, I'll never know. But creepy lady who looked like a baby snatcher, I hope we never meet again. I am a 6 feet 7 male in Australia, and I'd like to think I'm a fairly tough and intimidating guy, but some of the stuff that used to go on at the mall I used to work the night shift for still gives me goosebumps to this day. So the mall I worked at was very, very large, probably the largest in my state, I'd say. Up until about 8.30 p.m., it would still be quite busy. Only around 9.30 p.m. would we manage to usher all of the stragglers out, and only at about 11 p.m. would all of the business owners have left. My job was basically to patrol the mall and make sure no one was sticking around after the doors were closed during the night. We didn't have guns or batons, only a can of mace that was very rarely used. There were multiple occasions where we would find would-be thieves hiding around trying to break into shops after dark, but they were normally far outnumbered by the five of us on shift at a time, and they would usually be intimidated by me or some of the other imposing members of security. This one night, though, things started getting really weird for me on the night shift, so I'd say it was about two o'clock, and I was standing in the middle of the empty food court eating a sandwich. This was the only part of the mall that had any light at nighttime due to the skylight, so it was comfortable to eat there. While I was eating, though, I heard a dull scraping noise from the hallway leading off from the food courts into some toilets. It sounded like a piece of metal dragging across the floor. I was immediately put on edge, and I flicked on my flashlight without a moment of hesitation. I can remember creeping down the hallway, flashlight in hand, illuminating a good six or seven meters in front of me. As I got closer and closer to the end of the hall, the noise became louder and louder until I was at the end of the hallway, and there were the toilet doors to the left and right of me. I could tell the sound was coming from the female toilets, though. I gripped the handle and opened the door a tiny little crack. The noise was now very clear and had me not scared but confused. I yelled, Who is in there? The noise quickly stopped. I paused for a moment, listening hard through the tiny crack of the door, and I swear to God I could hear breathing, low, male breathing. I shut the door, still gripping the handle tightly, and flicked on my radio. This is 1-3. I need help in the food court bathrooms. I think someone's here. 
There was no response. This was really strange, and it put me further on edge. Policy was to always answer the radio, and now I was truly becoming quite alarmed. This is 1-3. Does anyone copy? Still no response. I can remember whispering to myself, what the actual fuck? I again opened the door a tiny crack. Listen, mate, I said, sounding as intimidating as possible. If you don't come out with your hands up, you're going to end up eating your teeth tonight. Do you want that? I sat there at the door, quite honestly terrified at this point. This whole situation made no sense at all. Why would someone be in the female bathrooms? What was the metal noise? What the fuck is even happening? I very slowly opened the door and scanned my flashlight slowly across the room. All the cubicles were open, but other than that, the room was totally empty. I was totally terrified by now. I was definitely losing it. I walked into the center of the bathroom, closing the door behind me, scared to the core. I let out a faint, this is some horror movie shit I, come out, when I heard the long whining squeak of the door behind me. I spun around basically crying at this point, and shone my flashlight on a massive man, at least a head taller than me or so it seemed in my state at the time. He was Caucasian and at least in his forties, with matte gray hair all over his forehead, he was mid-opening the door but stopped dead still in the middle of his action. He just looked at me, smiling this guilty smile like a kid would make when he gets caught stealing biscuits or some shit like that. I'm not going to lie, I was so scared I froze. He lifted his finger up to his mouth, shh, before swinging the door open all the way and sprinting out with what looked like some type of small metal box in his hand. Turns out he was just behind the toilet door when I was opening it, and I totally missed him. I was so close to him and didn't even notice him. He could have killed me if he had a knife or something, and that thought still haunts me to this day. Later that night, my radio miraculously started working again, and I told my co-workers about my story. They collectively went pale when I told them what happened. They all had similar stories, but none were as much of a close shave as mine. I worked the night shift for another week after that before I quit. I'm not sticking around in a job like that.